Hi, Dale Tyus with Two Minute Bass Lessons. Um, today we're going to continue on with the series on studio tools, things that I feel you absolutely have to have with you if you want to be a successful recording bassist. Um, today I'm not going to talk about some piece of gear you have to buy or things like that that comes from the musical instrument uh, industry. It's really common items that have pulled my hiney out of the fire more times than I can count. Now I should say that when I first started my career as a bassist back in 1984, I was lucky enough to start as a session player for a local studio. I didn't have any of these concepts or any of these tools gathered, and luckily the, um, the owner of the studio and a lot of the engineers I worked with kind of realized I was new and would give me suggestions, and that started to build this pool of knowledge that I, uh, that I use today. But I was also very fortunate at my time at MI, both as a student and later as a counselor and instructor that I was able to hang with guys like the late Jim Lacefield, who just was one of the kings of recording. His uh, resume looked like the LA phone book. Uh, and guys like Tommy Tedesco, guitarist Tommy Tedesco, also an icon as a studio recording guitarist. And they would throw these little nuggets of knowledge, hey, it's good to take this, you should do this, and they'd always qualify it and tell me why. And I benefited from that, so that's what I'm trying to pass on to you. So today it's not so much uh, gears and toys as simple items like Highlighters, pencils, manuscript paper, post-its, things like that. So let me tell you why. Um, a lot of times when you're dealing with uh, sessions, a lot, and, and I did mostly in Los Angeles media sessions, uh, TV commercials, radio spots, things like that, they're, they're literally just a factory. They want to get you in, have you record the thing, and get out as soon as possible. And so um, you sometimes only have a very short amount of time to look at the score. And uh, one thing that I learned from a couple of the guys is that if you bring different colored highlighters, you can highlight things like where key changes are that you might miss in the heat of battle, um, repeats, uh, any special you know, notations. Now, it, it should be mentioned that 99.9% .9 of the time it's okay to write on the paper. Um, there are some guys that freaked out in my early on my career when I start marking up the chart. It's very rare, but you should ask, uh, especially if you're new to the studio and you've never worked with these guys before. Just say, hey, can I make notations on this? If they say no, ask if you can make a copy. Um, and, you know, I'll get to back to the plan C if they say, well, you don't have a copier. But um, highlighters are great. And what you want to do is get into a discipline that you always choose one color for, like, key changes, one color for repeats, and maybe special uh, notations, any kind of special thing that needs to draw your eye. What this does is that focuses your attention so that you won't make a stupid mistake like playing right through a coda or things like that. So I do like highlighters. Pencils are a no-brainer. Um, you're going to have to make changes. Uh, people are not perfect and also recording a lot of times is a very fluid situation. The initial chart might have a certain phrase and also the producer says, no, no, you know, what I want to do here is do this instead. So being able to kind of scratch it out or make changes is, is really a, a life saving. The reason I don't do a pen, I did it early in my career, is then guys start talking back and forth and we record it one way and they're like, no, 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 let's make that G a G sharp. And so if it's in pen, it just becomes a horrible looking mess. So just have yourself a couple pencils pre-sharpened uh, and you probably want to throw in a sharpener, a manual sharpener, just to, you never know, you know, that you could be working and it could be a long session and you're breaking leads and it's just best to be able to, to get yourself a, a little sharpener. Now, the reason I bring blank manuscript paper is sometimes sections get radically changed or you've marked up something so much it's hard to read. And it's not a problem if you're working on a chart and they've just really changed the section, you can just notate on your sheet music that new section and just put it on your stand next to the other charts. So that you're reading along and then you, and then you put a blue highlight on it and say, you know, go to, go to alternate sheet or just to, even just a reminder, just a little dash and then put a dash here. So as you're reading it, you go, oh yeah, this is the new section. You come over, read the new section, then you go back and again, use the highlighter so you can quickly find your spot back in the chart. Uh, it's really key. I, I've gone through a lot of paper that way. And then lastly, post-its. You don't have to get cute little post-its with kittens on it, but it helps. No, I, they were just cheap. I just figured them up. Uh, at times, when you do have guys that uh, prefer you not to mark up the, the score for one reason or the other, or you want to make notes and just separately put notes, I always find post-its are really handy. Um, in fact, whenever I can get them, I get the little post-its that are thin strips. Um, they're for you know, marking pages and in books and stuff. Uh, and I can then put them on this and write actual notations to myself, and it doesn't, it doesn't affect the original um, score at all. 
you know, again, I only do that if people are being real persnickety about keeping the score clean. Um, but it is also helpful for little things. Um, I've used them for everything, writing down what I, uh, you know, if someone says, hey, what do you want for lunch? I can write it down and hand them, um, and hand them a post-it. Hopefully they won't bring me back a kitten. Um, but it kind of goes along with the manuscript. It's just good to have. Let's also talk about amount of supplies. Um, you, as a session bass player, you want to play well and have good sounding gear so that people go, man, tone is great and he's in there, he's professional. But there's little extra things in this highly competitive world that can get you to be the guy they think of uh, when they want to call for the next session. I always would carry multiple pencils. I'd carry multiple highlighters, multiple copies of paper because you never know when that other player is in the room going, oh man, that's a fantastic idea. And you know, for the price of just a couple dollars, hand them a set and go, oh, that's great, man. Here, just take them. Seriously, no, I got a lot. That just kind of sets you apart in his mind. He's like, man, this guy really wants me to do well. That's great. He goes on to a session. So let's say, you, in this case, you are talking with a guitar player. He goes on to a whole other studio you've never been able to get into. He's involved in a session. The bass player's not doing well. He, you know, that's just one extra thing where he would go, oh, man, that's great. Let's get Dale. You know, let's get him down here. And what a nice guy. It's not because you're going to hand out free highlighters. It's because you were kind of that team player. You know, you were supplying maybe manuscript paper to guys. Um, if, if someone's wanting to write down a phone number, you throw them your, your, uh, your pad of, uh, of post-its. It's the little things like this that just really help build your reputation in the studio um, and just helps hopefully get you that callback that's uh, so important. So, studio tools number two, pens, pencils, paper, post-its, things like that. And of course, you could add on to that element. Um, I, you know, there's been times when I've carried small rulers, things like that, um, but I didn't want to get to that minutia in this lesson. So there you have it, studio tools number two, uh, just some cool office supplies that could help you play better, have a better session, and get the next session. So if you have any questions, please email me at dalet at have a great day, guys.